first, we'll be middle, and we'll be last. Uh, and we'll begin, and you will have three minutes to introduce yourself. I just remembered, I did not give you guys two minutes to close. So if you have anything you want to say, I'll give it to you after the chair. But there were no questions coming in. Three minutes. My name is Bill Biggers. I'm running for sheriff. I'm a lifelong resident of Cleveland County. Uh, grew up in Muscadown. I live in Prudhoe. Um, got 17 years law enforcement experience. I'm currently a Carroll County deputy. Uh, been with the field five years. Uh, my plan for being sheriff is uh, I want to go back to the way it used to be. Is right is right. Wrong is wrong. You break the law, you'll be held accountable. Uh, I want to treat everybody with the same respect, no matter how much they get in life or how least uh, what they don't have in life. They'll get the same respect from me. I'm big on honesty. If you're right, I'll back you 100%. If you're wrong, I'll tell you you're wrong. Um, would love to, look to hire more deputies, uh, but to be able to do that, I would have to look at the budget, see where we can trim money, and uh, see uh, work with the commission board to see if we could get money through that or look for grants and stuff like that. Uh, really big on community policing. I'd like for the deputies to uh, know who they're working for. If they see you outside working, I want them to stop and talk to you, see if there's any concerns they need to be worried about or any problems we need to know about. But I uh, just ask for your support. Thank you. Our next candidate for sheriff is John Daniel. Hi, Dan. My name is John Daniel. Speak close together. Okay. Louder. My name is John Daniel. Uh, I was a lifelong resident of Cleveland County. Uh, I live out Fort Grammar, a little small community, a community called Heights Hour. Uh, I'm the son of Jimmy and the late Shirley Daniel. Uh, I started my career in Heflin in 2004. I uh, worked there until 2010, uh, I then swapped over to the sheriff's office where I'm still currently employed um, at the sheriff's office as the chief deputy. Um, my roles at the sheriff's office, uh, I'm a firearms instructor. Uh, I'm a evidence technician over the guns. Uh, I'm a sex offender officer. Um, I all, well, I guess you say I'm the sex offender officer. Uh, I. I also uh, uh, supervise the patrol deputies uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so, like I said, I, I got a little bit of knowledge of what goes on at the sheriff's office. Uh, so, like I said, I just appreciate everybody's support. Thank you. Our next candidate for sheriff is Jeff Good evening, everyone. I'm A.J. Benefield. I am a candidate for Cleveland County Sheriff. I am the son of James and Barbara Benefield. Um, I'm married to Jennifer Benefield. We'll have our 27th wedding anniversary this coming Friday, something to be proud of these days. Um, I am seeking the candidacy for sheriff because I have a passion for this county and I love this county. I, my whole entire adult life, I have been in service to this country or in this community. I am a military veteran. The best three words I can describe my political stance is I'm a Christian, I'm a conservative, and I'm a patriot. Eight years in the military, uh, four years active duty, four years in the reserve. I came out, graduated the Northeast Alabama Police Academy, Jacksonville State University in 1998. Uh, from that point, began my career at Heflin Police Department, stayed there. Uh, my partner at the time won the sheriff's race, uh, asked me to come over to the sheriff's department as a narcotics investigator. I went over to the county at that point I had applied at the state prior to that, and after being at the county a few years, uh, the state started hiring again. I left and went to the state. I've had the opportunity to work 23 different counties in the state of Alabama, and I am here to show you my results, tell you my results. Um, there's three good men standing up here, and I won't argue that point. I know both these men have served with these men. They're all, we're all three good men, I can tell you that. I'm telling you and asking you to base it on training, qualifications, and so forth, education. And 
during that time, um, I served at Heflin. After leaving Heflin, like I said, the county and the state. While doing so, I've had the opportunity to work budgets. I currently serve as a deputy sheriff assigned as a uh, administrator over the new correctional detention facility in Randolph County over the 5th Judicial. Um, I know how to budget. I have completed and am the only active law enforcement member in this county who has achieved the executive level certification in law enforcement in the state of Alabama. Um, I'm proud of that certification and it equips me to do budgeting. I can sit here and look at your seven figure budget and tell you how to use that money frugally. I believe in an open line of communications and letting our county commissioners know what our needs are for deputies, our correction officers within the jail, and keep them informed of our needs. And I'm here to tell you that I will give you 100% as your sheriff. I will be at every county commission meeting. You'll know what the sheriff's department's doing. I will present you statistics down to the mileage driven by each deputy. You will know how many cases we work, the cases we're working on, and I will keep you informed. I believe in transparency and accountability. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Now you can start off with your first question again. I'm gonna go ahead and hold your microphone up closer so yes, we can get the ones in the back. What are your character traits that you believe qualify you to be the best sheriff for our county? Characteristics trait, um, I'm a pretty, Pretty open, outspoken Christian. I know Facebook can be those seven. Facebook can be the devil. I try to use, use my platform wherever I'm at to let people know what my morals and ethics are. Not to say that these guys over here aren't morally and ethically sound. Like I said, I know both of them. They're good men. Don't have anything negative to say. Um, my training, my education, and my experience I can bring to the table. Uh, my connections. I know somebody. I know the sheriffs in 67 counties and 200 and something for police chiefs in this. I know if something goes wrong immediately, who to call, whether it's a terroristic threat, where we have a bomb threat, whether whatever we have, I'm immediately gonna know what to do and I'm gonna know how to handle the situation and I can come in from day one and know how to handle it. Thank you. Bill, what are your character traits that you believe qualify you to be the best sheriff for our county? Number one, I'm brutally honest. I tell you what I feel, I tell you what I think. Uh, number two, my training. Um, I've got a lot of training in a lot of different areas. Uh, uh, number three, I've got outside resources that I can go to. Uh, I know sheriffs in several different surrounding counties. Uh, just my training and my honest <coughs> um, being that I'm there when you need me and you count on me anytime there now. John, what are the character traits that you have that you really qualify you to be the best sheriff for our county? Uh, I've got 18 dedicated years of experience, which have all been here in this county. Uh, and I, I, I got a working knowledge of the sheriff's office. I know how it operates. Uh, I have a close working relationship with all the surrounding agencies, uh, which is in county and out of county. Uh, we have to call on them uh, quite often because everybody knows we are a small department and we have limited resources so it takes everybody uh, to sometimes get the situation under control uh, so like i said i just i, I base mine off of my experience and uh, the close working relationship with the agencies surrounding the agencies Wait a minute, come back. You can be first, sir. Okay. <laughs> How do you plan to make Cleburne County safer for better? Uh, continue fighting the drug pandemic that we have uh, that affects families. Uh, like I said, we're fighting it every day, and I'm going to continue fighting it. Uh, another thing, I'm going to work closely with the, the commissioners to try to create uh, some more openings for deputies. We need, we need more guys. Uh, I mean, that's about it. Just continue, continue what we're doing. Uh, like I said, we do a great job, and like I said, we don't post everything on Facebook. Uh, we're not a uh, the sheriff's office. We're not very social media friendly. Uh, but I, I mean, we're out there 
locking people up every day, and we won't continue to do that. How do you plan to make Cleveland County safer or better? Um, I'll be available 24-7. Um, we go to internet, uh, we'll start community policing, uh, make sure the communities of the county are controlled. We're not just going to concentrate on certain areas of the county. We're going to make sure the whole county is patrolled. Uh, we're going to get out and talk to people. We're going to become more aggressive on the drugs uh, problem. We become more uh, aggressive on the burglaries and the thefts and the other all other crimes. We're not just going to concentrate on two certain crimes, three certain crimes. We're going to concentrate on, on them all. We're going to get everything uh, under control that we can. And, you know, like you said, it takes everybody. We're going to have to have more people. Thank you. And AJ, how do you plan to make Cleveland County safer and better? Well, I do understand we're limited on our money with our funds as far as we know we need to hire deputies. We know that. Um, I have spoken with Sheriff Stutter in Clay County, Sheriff Cofield in Randolph, Sheriff Wade in Cahoon County, and our surrounding counties, and Chief Partridge at Oxford. We're going to have memorandums of understanding with all these agencies, and when something does happen, if we don't have adequate manpower, we're immediately going to call them and use their resources, just like if they need us for something, they're going to utilize us. I understand there's limited money. That's where budgeting comes in and is very important. You know how to have to budget that money and be frugal with it to get the biggest bang for your buck. So you have to utilize your state, federal, and your surrounding agencies because our manpower here is limited, very much limited. So I think my working relationship with everyone at state, federal level, and our surrounding counties is going to be the key for us to be successful. And we will address every and all aspects of crime from drugs to burglaries to thefts to sexual assaults to everything. Next question, but first question is this. What do you believe is the number one challenge facing the sheriff's office today, and how will you address it? The number one challenge facing the sheriff's department today is uh, limited funds. I mean, we're limited funds um, and a drug epidemic. I mean, we have a drug epidemic with methamphetamines. I don't know if there's a family in here that does not have a family member or a loved one who has been addicted or been through the jail up here or surrounding jails. And if you go to the jail and look at the people on the board, you can see very clearly that everybody in there, it may not necessarily be a drug charge, it may be a theft charge or something, but ultimately the root of those issues is your drug issues. So uh, every man up here, all of us know that drug is your number one issue in this. You're gonna have to utilize your state agencies, your drug task force, your federal agencies. I work closely with the FBI on our OSADEF money. Um, we were heavily involved with them and very successful with them. And they were willing to come up and cut you checks in this county to help you work your drug epidemic that's here. challenge facing the sheriff's office today and how will you address it? Uh, as far as the sheriff's office, I think it's trying to retain employees. Uh, we lose a lot of employees to surrounding agencies. They can go down the road and make twice what they can here. Uh, so my plan is to work closely with the commission to try to create incentives to retain the employees we have because uh, we lose a lot of people to surrounding agencies. Uh, like right now, I could leave and go to Oxford. I wanted to make a whole lot more money, but I don't want to. I want to be right here where I was born and raised, uh, serving the citizens of Cleveland County. Thank you. Thank you. Buell, what do you believe is the number one challenge facing the sheriff's office today, and how will you address it? The number one challenge is, I, I think, it's money and employees. Um, and the fight against drugs. I mean, you got to be able to have the manpower to fight the drug problem. You've got to have the money to be able to support the fight against it. So that's the number one challenge for me. In your opinion, what are the most important skills a Cleveland County Sheriff should have? Um, important skill to be the interpersonal skills to know how to communicate with people, uh, honesty, is a big thing with me. Uh, 
skill to be able to work with the commission board, uh, still to, to uh, be able to maintain a good relationship with the surrounding counties, not only in the state of Alabama, I bring in good working relationships with surrounding counties in Georgia that would gladly uh, back us up if we had that big of a problem. So I just think all around it's just the relationship that you have with your surrounding counties and feel that you're in person to Communications is key to everything in law enforcement. If your people does not know what's going on, there's no way you're going to be effective in what you're doing. You have to be able to communicate and you have to have training. Training, 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 and education, education, education. If you are sending a deputy or a police officer, no matter who it is, to the police academy and that's the only training they're getting, they're not going to be effective. Trends are changing, investigations are changing. You have to keep your people up to date with their training, their education, and so forth. There is drugs coming out every day with new names, different derivatives and ingredients, and you have to stay educated. Educated is the key, and education and training is the key to all of this and communications. Have an open line with all communications with your commission. Know what the problems are. Um, be able to talk to them and make them understand what your needs are. Be able to distinguish your needs from your wants. Thank you. And John, in your opinion, what are the most important skills that Cleveland County Sheriff should have? Well, basically, like I said, communication, uh, being open-minded, uh, not being able or not making uh, knee-jerk reactions off of, you know, decisions, uh, being able to sit down, communicate, work things out, uh, being open-minded, uh, having good communication with your employees, uh, if that's the one that's out there uh, working for you. And like I said, I, I don't discriminate. Uh, so like I said, I've locked up kin folks, uh, family members. Uh, so like I said, I, I'm just here to, to do a job and that's what I plan to do. Okay. Uh, John, do you have a question for you? Would you carry out any order, even from the federal government or the state government that goes against our constitutional freedoms? No. I would never do that. Thank you. Oh. you. Would you carry out any order from the feds or the state government that go against our constitution? Absolutely not. I think if everybody would look back on my very first post, one of my things I posted was none of the people in my agency will carry out any unconstitutional mandates. I made that post my very first post when I announced that I was running for sheriff. If you will look back and read that, I make that very clear because we are in terrorist times. We have liberal leaders up here and I, we're all very like-minded to this and I think every one of these men will take a stand, myself included, but we must take a stand against the liberal agenda because it, it, is, it is killing law enforcement. You know, these guys are sitting here talking about retaining guys. It's everywhere, it's a problem everywhere. People aren't beating the doors down to get into law enforcement anymore because of the way they're looked upon a certain. Fortunately, we live in a great county and a great state where they stu still do look at us and, and support us, but you get above the Mason-Dixon line, it's horrible, it's horrible. I mean, they just do not, do not support their law enforcement, so absolutely not. Another question. Last but not first, what are your plans for the future of the work release program? Well, I, I support the work release program. Um, I believe the work release program is very effective. Um, I know it's been it's been utilized in a great way by all the sheriffs and the former sheriffs that I know of. I believe um, utilizing the money put a percentage toward their fines and penalties to make sure that's number one priority is restitution of who is owed restitution, their fines are paid, and then the rest, you know, they go into their books and whatever else is the division is brought up. But I strongly support the work release program. I believe it's very effective. It keeps our roads and our counties clean. It keeps our school system. They help, they do so much. And um, I strongly support the work release program. Thank you. What are your plans for the future of the work release program? As AJ said, I strongly support the work release program. Uh, I 
work at the jail uh, in 06 and it was going me and I strongly support it. I've got some other plans for it. Like AJ said, I, I think it should be used for restitution of the people's fines. Uh, they help keep the county clean, the roadsides picked up. I strongly support it. Thank you. And John, your plans for the future of the work for this program? Um, I support it, but maybe be some stipulations. Uh, just here recently, we've had COVID in our jail uh, during this pandemic. You know, I don't, I don't support it right now, but maybe in the future. Once the pandemic settles down, then yes, I'm for the work release because uh, I mean that can break the county if it were to spread through the the, the jail. Uh, but yes, I, I support it, but, but not at the current moment. Okay. And one more question. Currently, state law regarding Cleburne County requires three years of law enforcement experience in the state of Alabama. Would you be willing to support an amendment that would change the requirement to three years of law enforcement experience? Uh, I mean, plain and simple. If I build a house, I'm not going to hire a plumber to wire my house. I'm not going to hire an electrician to plumb my house. Uh, so I'm, I'm a firm believer you need experience in law enforcement. I think you actually need more than three years, just, just personally. If uh, someone is elected, then I, I think that they need to attend the academy to be able to certify that somebody's running the county. I think they need a knowledge of Alabama law, of what they're going to be enforcing. I think you need some background to know what's going on. Thank you. That question I want to make sure I'm Currently, sure. state law regarding Cleburne County requires three years of law enforcement experience in the state of Alabama. Would you be willing to support an amendment that would change the requirement to three years of law enforcement experience? Absolutely, because you cannot sit here and tell me that an FBI agent, a U.S. Marshal, or someone in DEA cannot be your sheriff and be an effective, productive sheriff. I, I don't agree with that amendment to say I do believe a person needs training and experience but I believe a person can come in and, and, and there's a two-week transition course you can come over here with experience in Georgia or wherever and go through a two-week transition course and be APO certified in Alabama this if this was in place we would not been able to elect a single sheriff that we had up to 2002 when Joe Dax was sworn in I don't know if you guys even realize that so I believe this needs to be amended strongly amended, I believe in training, I believe in experience, but I believe this was done, in my opinion, in a hasty decision and uh, needs to be amended. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. If you will, I'll read it again. Currently, state law regarding Cleburne County requires three years of law enforcement experience in the state of Alabama. Would you be willing to support an amendment that would change the requirement to three years of law enforcement experience? Absolutely, because to me, Law enforcement experience is law enforcement experience. Sure, the laws are a little different, but law enforcement in general is law enforcement. Uh, and this law, I think, could have went a different way. Uh, at this time, before your two minute closing, does anybody have, have questions? Tracy has a question. I have one. First off, thank y'all for um, amending the law because we have a lot of people that. that that went to Georgia to work, but still no law enforcement. So thank y'all for your stand on that law. I appreciate that. But one of the common denominators I've heard tonight is lack of manpower, lack of money. You have a lot of uh, officers, former officers that work either in Georgia or uh, adjoining counties, Oxford, whatever, um, that would be willing to uh, assist Boone County, assist deputies as a reserve. Um, there's several times that you have deputies out there by themselves, which is Tracy, form it, frame it as a question. So the question is, how? what is your stance on re, uh, starting the reserve program with either former officers or currently certified officers that are willing to serve and help with the Sheriff's Department and Cleveland County? I support it. I know of at least two right now the certified officers that live in the county that's been turned down from being reserved in Cleveland County, but I would 
I, I support Salt Reserve Program back up. I strongly support the reserve program. I don't really know the, the reasons behind why there's not a reserve program. Uh, that's the number one way I believe that you could utilize your people. And there's lots of people out here with wealth and knowledge and law enforcement that we need to be utilizing for free. And that's something I do not understand. It is hard to be, I don't want to say cheap help, but free help that has experience. So absolutely, positively, I would support the reserve program with trained officers. I'm not going to put anybody on the street to put a liability on this county. They will be trained and they will know how to handle themselves, but 100% I support the reserve program. All right. I also do support the reserve, but like AJ said, I, mean, I just ain't going to throw my hair to the wolves. They're going to need some sort of training because uh, there have been many nights out there. I've been by myself and I've been glad to have a reserve <laughs> set beside me. But yes, I, I do support it. Before you go away, anybody else have a question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Second Amendment preservation is really important to me, and constitutional carry is legislation that's pending right now in the majority passed the House, and now it's headed to the Senate. Um, the biggest source of opposition for constitutional carry has been the sheriffs throughout the state. So my question to you is, do you support constitutional carry? Or as you say, permitless carry. Uh, yes, and I support it. Uh, like I said, I believe that's your constitutional right. So I believe as long as you're capable and and, and, and don't have any felonies or anything to permit you from carrying, I believe you should be able to carry. Question is, do you support constitutional carry or permitless carry? I support. I support it very much. I believe every person, uh, no felonies, no criminal background, has a right to bear arms. And I, I encourage people to have at least one gun in the house to protect them. So I support it very much. AJ, the question, do you support constitutional carry or permitless carry? I would go further on your question. When you support constitutional carry, does that not do away with your pistol permit? It does if you are carried in the state of Alabama, which okay. would also be not included. I don't think you should have to pay for your Second Amendment right. Absolutely, I do support it. Okay. Any other questions? At this time, you were last, so now you're first this time. Uh, you have two minutes to wrap it up. I'm just going to close out that you got three great guys to choose from. I've known these guys their whole lives. They've known me. Um, I'm here to just tell you to base this on experience, training, and so forth. Um, I can bring, I'm bringing to the table 24 years plus experience, my military experience. Um, 2021, I, I was nominated and won the Buford Pusser Walk and Tile National Officer of the Year for the whole United States. And I didn't do that by flying by the seat of my pants. I went to McNair County, Tennessee and accepted that award a few months ago, and I'm very proud of that award. That meant a lot to me. And that was kind of an accumulation of my years of experience and all that I've done. And what I'm asking you is, you're not gonna hear me out here politic and bad mouthing these guys. I'm here to tell you who I am, what my plan is, and what I wanna do for this county. And I'm just asking you humbly, if you would support me for your vote, with your vote, and I will not let you down. I will always have an open door policy. I will come to you. I won't expect you to come to my office and meet with me. If you would like to meet with me, I'll come to you. But I will be honest, I may not always tell you what I want, you, what you want to hear, but what I promise one thing to you is what I tell you will always be the truth. Thank you. In closing, I started my law enforcement career over here, started out as a reserve deputy. I love this county, I'm a lifelong resident of this county. Um, the one thing that I will tell you you want a sheriff to be honest with you and tell you even when he's wrong, admit when he's wrong, that's me. Because honesty is a big thing with me. If I can't give you my word and it be my bond, I don't need to be giving you my word. So I love law enforcement. Uh, I love this county. I love these citizens of this county. So I ask you to support me. 
for your vote. Uh, I think my career speaks for itself. I have 18 dedicated years to Cleveland County. Um, I want to continue uh, my career here in Cleveland County. Um, like I said, I have open door policy. Uh, so anytime anybody needs anything, uh, my phone will be on, my door will be open. Uh, so I just, I just hope everybody give me a shot and just know that your protection is my priority. Thank you very much, Marjorie. At this time, since I forgot to offer the two minute closing to the Board of Education people, if you would like to have that opportunity, you're welcome to have it. They're going to take it. <laughs> First, uh, this is Tracy McMahon since he doesn't have a son. <laughs> Please, no one. Um, like, like we said before, I've lived in Cleveland County most of my life. My wife's a school, school teacher. School board's a six-year term. It's probably the longest term of any politician in the county, as far as I know. Um, it's not to be taken lightly. When you're there, you're there for six years. Um, my record, I haven't always voted with everybody on the board. Um, I've been the lone wolf a few times. I voted what I thought my constituents wanted. Um, and I think most of the time it has been. Um, I'm not going to be your yes man. I'm not going to vote yes just because that's what everybody else voted. Um, me and Chad, he's our superintendent, we're good friends. We don't always agree. That's just the way it is sometimes. Um, I want what's best for our kids. Our kids come first, our teachers come second. Um, anybody that's ever needed me, there, I'm a phone call away. I think most of the teachers have my phone number. Um, most of the parents have my phone number. I get phone calls from Heflin. I get phone calls from Hollis. Um, like I said, I'm a county school board member, but I represent Ramburn. I'm proud to represent Ramburn. I think I've done a good job over the first six years, and I hope I get elected another six. Thank you. In closing, I'd just like to kind of sum up what we what said a while ago. Again, just want to be able to be there uh, if elected to support Ramber, the kids, the parents, the, the teachers, the faculty there, administration to, to do the, the right thing for our kids, make sure that uh, we stand up for the laws that may be coming down, that we stand up and do the right things for, for our kids. Uh, like I said, I have two kids in the school system. Uh, I know Tracy's had some in the past, and we, I'm sure there's nobody wants to see things done better than people that's got some something in the fight. Uh, again, I appreciate your vote, and uh, thank you. And that is all. The time. all very much for coming and want to invite you we're having political forums with different candidates uh, on, we meet the first Tuesday of each month our next will be April the 5th at which time we've invited all the candidates who are uh, running for the position of representative for the state and we're district 40 Cleveland County has been redistricting in now we're joining Calhoun County but we should have all the candidates for that race at that time and on May, we're going to have both state Senate candidates and both state Board of Education candidates. Uh, probably going to be more. I'm still talking with candidates to come, but we invite you to come to that. And hopefully we'll be able to stream live at that time. So thank you all very much for coming. Feel free to ask questions of the candidates if you'd like. I'm sure they'll be glad to hang around and uh, have conversation with you. Thank you and good night.